Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Lauren Rumpler Productions. Today I have Nick Gillespie from Reason, um, and I'm very, very, very excited. Um, I love his work, I'm a big fan, and I wanna talk to him about his organization today. So go ahead and tell everybody sure. what you do and introduce yourself. And Okay, well I'm Nick Gillespie and I work at Reason. Uh, Reason is uh, a magazine, it's a website, it's a video site. Reason.com. Uh, Reason is a monthly magazine that's been published since 1968. We're the leading libertarian publication and our subtitle is Free Minds and Free Markets because we believe that civil liberties and economic liberties are conjoined. Awesome. And so did Ayn Rand, actually. Mm -hmm. She was a big fan, a big proponent of the free market and the free mind, especially the free mind. Um, but she made some of the greatest arguments for capitalism in all of history. Uh, and Reason is actually, it was, as I said, it was founded in 1968 by a guy who was in college who was an objectivist or very friendly towards it. And he named the magazine Reason as mm -hmm. a kind of homage to Rand. Yes, he did. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to talk to you today about it, because I sure. thought that was so absolutely neat. And I thought we had a lot in common, mm -hmm. me doing the whole objectivist girl right. thing. And yeah. so I wanted to know, um, how do you display reason and promote the value of reason mm -hmm. and rationality? at Reason? Well, you know, this is something I started working at Reason in 1993. I was hired by uh, a woman, uh, Virginia Postrel, who was the editor-in-chief of the magazine um, at the time. And she, uh, neither of us are objectivists, but um, she really helped instill in me, uh, you know, a sense of when you're doing journalism, especially about policy and whatnot, you want to have a rational analysis. It's not, it's not everything. But part of what Reason has been doing for its entire history is applying, um, you know, what the founder in the opening document called logic, not legends. Mm. Uh, and, you know, and, and the idea there is that, especially with public policy issues, you should be dealing with facts and you should be dealing with dispassionate analysis because yes. emotions uh, in this realm will get you into a lot of trouble very quickly and you know yes. people see an injustice people see something they want to fix and if you go only on emotion the odds are very good that you're going to actually compound whatever problem you're trying to address and as a result reason does you know for instance we write a lot about the drug war war on drugs and a lot of that you can see is it's it's hysteria masquerading as public policy or factual analysis so people will say marijuana is a gateway drug and if, if people smoke marijuana they'll become heroin addicts so we have to make sure marijuana is illegal then we have to do this and like at every level of kind of drug war policy you can see where they're making these great leaps and bounds in logic and also in factual assertion that it's just not true and it helps to bring reason you know to bringing like a cooler dispassionate level of analysis to this type of topic. Right, and I, as Rand said, reason and rationality are the recognition of reality and acknowledging that fact. Mm -hmm. And you do that in order to be able to portray the other values such as productivity, integrity, honesty. And I think that reason as an organization has a lot of mm -hmm. integrity, has a lot of honesty. Um, I have really enjoyed reading your work and the work of the entire organization is right. absolutely fabulous. One of the things that's related to it, and you know, and this is something I know Rand uh, also believed in, coming out of a tradition of kind of the Enlightenment um, and the idea that you would make arguments that made sense that were not argued because, like you know, you can say I'm the Pope, so what I say goes, or I'm the boss, and I don't want to hear anything from you. Rather, the idea of the Enlightenment was that you would make arguments that everybody would agree made sense and that were convincing. Um, mm. And there's limits to this, and I'll get to that in a second, but one of the things that we try to do at Reason when we're doing articles, about, you know, stories about different things, because we're journalists, we try to include as much information as possible so people can kind of independently evaluate our take on things. Oh, that's so important. And it, and it, it is, because, you know, it, you know, and it, it gives everybody, it's like showing your math. It's an exercise um, and it's, too. Yeah, and it, it helps you do better, but it also it also helps other people to check your sums and say like, okay, well, you know what, maybe this isn't as convincing. And that's part of what we do, and it's part of what is great about the current moment where, uh, you know, there, when the web became a big part of journalism, early bloggers would say, you know, that the internet will fact check your ass, mm -hmm. you know, because you put stuff <laughs> out there and then people will find if you've made 
you know, assertions that are exactly. wrong or you're, or you're using out, outdated data or something. Right, but you have to have the integrity yeah. to be able to recognize that Oh, the honesty, actually, right. the honesty to recognize that you that the other person is actually right. And so a lot of people, mm -hmm. one of the things I talk to my audience about is recognizing when you're wrong and being willing to admit that so yeah. that you can grow. Because honestly, it feels better to accept that you're wrong right now right. and be right in the future than it does to be wrong forever. Yeah. It's so much better. And it's, you know, there's a lot of people are prone, I think, to confirmation bias where you weed out any information oh, yeah. or data or arguments that are going to complicate your worldview and you only look for things that reinforce what you already believe. And that's one of the things that is interesting about reason as a journalistic enterprise. Again, you know, everything is at reason.com, the videos, the print magazine the website. But, you know, we also focus a lot on the limits to reason because, you know, man is a thinking animal and they're, we're very smart, but we're also capable of deluding ourselves. And mm -hmm. so you want to have your arguments out in circulation so that other people can Absolutely. pick them apart. And it's hard to do that because you, you don't want to be wrong and you, you know, you don't want to be told that this isn't perfect. But that's really essential for progress and, and gaining more knowledge, even if we never get to truth with a capital T. You know, we're, we're moving closer to the extent that we are honing our ideas and circulating our ideas and making, you know, getting them checked from all angles. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things you actually mentioned that I want to touch on really quickly is is emotion. Mm -hmm. So you talked about how emotion in some cases is very negative, right. but I think in some cases it can actually be really positive. Mm -hmm. And I found that one example of that, and I, I would love for you to add to that, is um, is um, when you are kind of going through what I like to do is file away the way that I feel about certain mm -hmm. things and deal with them as they're coming at me in a logical way but later kind of go back mm -hmm. and think about you know checking my emotions and making it so that um, I'm thinking about well was my reaction rational right. was my emotional reaction rational and so you can train your emotions a lot of people don't think that you can train right, your emotions right, yeah. and that they're just random but you can train your emotions to adhere to reality that way your reaction to mm -hmm. a situation your emotions are able to help you guide a rational right. guide you to rationality because you're you've trained your emotions to be well, able to help you. Well I would you. definitely agree you know emotions are really you know and emotions are meaningful and it's I find somebody like Rand particularly interesting as a novelist because you know the novel is a form that call or drama you know any any kind of obviously she was also a, a dramatist or a playwright but yes you know you want to involve people emotionally but then you also want to you know it like having emotion doesn't mean that you just say oh forget it i'm not going to analyze something rationally mm -hmm. but learning how to you know what is the proper role of emotion in being human what is the proper role of being rational uh, or trying to escape from not escape from emotion, but like temper them so that every, you know we all are. I'll, I won't I won't speak for you, but like many of us, you know, you literally see red sometimes. Like something happens, oh, yes. and you really have a, a stark emotional experience. I think it'd be safe to say that everyone feels that at some point. Um, we're at a restaurant, by the way. Oh no! Emotional breakdown. Goes perfectly in line with our It's like, but you know, discussion. also when something is getting getting at you emotionally, it's a good time to say, okay, stop, what's going on here and think about it. And this is, uh, you know, people like, uh, who was a, a Albert Ellis, a psychologist, who was a huge critic of Ayn Rand. He created something called rational emotive, emotive therapy, which uh. is very, very influential. And in fact, is kind of similar to what you're talking about. It's that process where, you know, you, you go through things and you're trying to make sure that your emotions, your emotions are important signs, but that you don't let them control you in a way that gets you into trouble. And so in a way, somebody like Albert Ellis, who was a very staunch critic of Rand, was actually basically arguing the same type of uh, kind of human methodology almost that she was. Interesting, very interesting. Well, I really appreciate yeah. having you on my show. It was so much fun. Um, Nick Gillespie, everybody, Thanks. make sure you check out Reason. Make sure you check out his work. It's absolutely fabulous. If you want to become a more rational person, checking out Reason will help you do this because they will help you, they will help guide you and show you what reality looks like from a libertarian perspective. Now, remember, Everybody has their biases, so always think about the articles that you're reading very actively, but I think that it's a great step in the right direction to becoming a more rational person. So check out Reason, check out Nick, and remember guys, knowledge is not for all men, but for those who seek it, so keep seeking.